We work on keeping people healthy late in life, which means we are interested in treating aging as a medical problem. We believe that this is definitely within reach now. And our particular focus is on actually turning back the clock, repairing the damage that people have accumulated so as to make them biologically younger again. We don't work on just slowing down the clock. We don't think that that's a bad idea. We think it's great, but we want to go further. Oh yes, the outside of the body is the easy part. If we, the reason why cosmetic medicine doesn't really work today is because it's constantly having to cope with the fact that the inside of the body is continuing to get older. So conversely, if we can make the inside of the body younger again, then the outside comes, comes back pretty much on its own. Yeah, so when I talk about the work that we're doing, Huge numbers of concerns are always raised. People say, well, okay, maybe you could do this, but wouldn't it be a bad thing because we would create new problems that are even worse than the problems we have today? And I have always been astonished at the reluctance of people to think rationally about these things because it's incredibly easy to see that these problems won't happen you know, there's tiny probability that they would happen at all, and that even if they did happen, they could never be anywhere near as bad as the problem we have today, the problem of 100,000 people dying of aging every single day. So in the, case, in the specific case of overpopulation, the main reason why it's not going to happen is because other technologies are coming along more quickly than the technology I work on, which will greatly, massively increase the carrying capacity of the planet, the number of people who can be alive without an unacceptable amount of environmental impact. That's going to happen because of reductions in pollution, uh, the, the switch to renewable energy, the switch to artificial meat, things like that. I don't think that it's going to be necessary for anybody to behave differently than they do now. There will be massive economic benefits from, not, from people not getting sick when they get old. And yes, maybe there will be somewhat you know, subtle changes in the ways in which those economic benefits are shared out, in how the market adjusts to them. But I'm not at all, there's no prospect at all that this would be any more difficult than the way that humanity optimizes and capitalizes upon other dramatic technological advances. Right, today, Therapies that are high-tech, you know, difficult to produce and for the elderly, they are very expensive. Even in socialized medicine countries, they are very limited by ability to pay. So people worry, well, maybe these therapies will be the same. But there's a huge difference. The difference is that today, as you just said, these therapies basically don't work. They give a teeny tiny increase in longevity. They don't make people healthy again. They just extend the time that people are sick whereas the therapies that we're working on will actually make people healthy again. So that means they will pay for themselves economically. Therefore, it will make sense at the level of the government to subsidize these things and make sure that anyone who's old enough to need them can get them, even if they don't have the ability to pay, because that expenditure, upfront expenditure, will pay for itself many times over really quickly. I certainly think that at the moment we have a problem that people don't know what to do with the amount of life they already have. But that's the problem of education. You know, people who've got a good education never get bored. They've always got new ways to identify, uh, you know, what life can offer. And therefore, I think that a lot of what we will do with this increased prosperity that comes from people not getting sick is we will put a lot more money into adult education and retraining and so on so that people can make the most of what life has to offer, however long they live.